Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Kraken Wakes by John Wyndham. So, John Wyndham famously wrote The Day of the Triffids, uh, and yeah, I guess he was writing in the 50s, 60s, uh, let's have a look, 30s, 40s, well, and he died in 1969, so that's about right. This one was first published in 1953, and it's interesting because it definitely, uh, you can feel the, the Soviet threat, you know? <laughs> Um, so you can tell that it was very much in the public consciousness, the Cold War. I'll read this out. Um, Below the thunders of the upper deep, far, far beneath in the abysmal sea, his ancient, dreamless, uninvaded sleep, the kraken sleepeth, until the latter fire shall heat the deep, then once by men and angels to be seen, in roaring he, sh in roaring he shall rise. Ships are sinking for no apparent reason, carrying hundreds to a chill, dark, underwater grave. Strange fireballs race through the sky above the deepest trenches of the oceans. Something is about to show itself, something terrible and alien, a force capable of causing global catastrophe. Humankind, having probed the uncharted vastness of the seas with men and machines, has found that it is not alone. A powerful and inexplicable presence lurks there. Has it mistaken our investigations for threats? Or could it be that this new intelligence is simply malevolent, intent on the destruction of those who have entered the fathomless deep it dwells within? But I would definitely say, at least so far, I mean I'm about halfway through reading it at the moment, I'll give you another update towards the end. But it's very much so far been focused more on like geopolitics and uh, yeah, you know, again, the Cold War, the impasse between Russia and the United, uh, yeah, the impasse between Russia and the United States. And it starts with a rationale as well, where, because uh, it's all told in the first person and he says in the rationale, uh, I think I said that I shall write an account of all this. You mean a long one about the whole thing, a book, Phyllis asked. Well, I don't suppose it will ever be a printed book with stiff covers and a cloth binding, but still, a book, I agreed. And I kind of like that, I kind of like how it's meta, it's got like, because it's written from the, you know, uh, the first person point of view, it's then got a message directly to the reader from the narrator, I thought it was cool. I think this is kind of prescient, because you could say the same thing about uh, global warming and climate change. It began so unrecognisably. Had it been more obvious, and yet it is difficult to see what could have been done effectively, even if we had recognised the danger. Recognition and prevention don't necessarily go hand in hand. We recognise the potential dangers of atomic fission quickly enough, yet we could do little about them. We have a few Sherlock Holmes quotes in here, because uh, the main character is called Holmes. And so he says, People, I told him, are continually quoting to me things that the illustrious Holmes said to my namesake, but this time I'll do the quoting. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. Which is to say that if it is no terrestrial nation that is doing this, then... And that's when they start to entertain the possibility of aliens. Oh, and then uh, this guy says, this guy says to his, uh, to Holmes' wife, he, uh, he says, because that seems to me the only reasonable explanation where these two are concerned. It may be, as Mr. Holmes once remarked to your husband's illustrious namesake, a capital mistake to theorise before one has data, but it's mental suicide to funk the data one has. I think this is interesting as well. So they're talking about one of the uh, marine accidents. Phyllis cut me off. Mike, this isn't a game, you know. After all, a big ship has gone down, and 700 poor people have been drowned. That is a terrible thing. I dreamt last night that I was shut up in one of those little cabins when the water came bursting in. Yesterday, I began, and then stopped. I had been about to say that yesterday Phyllis had poured a kettle of boiling water down a crack in order to kill a lot more than 700 ants, but thought better of it. Yesterday, I amended. A lot of people were killed in road accidents. A lot will be today. I don't see what that has to do with it, she said. She was right. It was not a very good amendment, but neither had it been the right moment to postulate the existence of a menace that might think no more of us than we of ants. I thought this was interesting. So basically what happens towards the end is we see the aftermath of this kind of war with the creatures beneath the sea. And uh, so I'm going to read this out. The existence of numerous hotels and a reassuring elevation of some 700 feet above normal sea level were undoubtedly the factors which influenced Parliament in choosing the town of Harrogate in Yorkshire as its seat. The speed with which it assembled there was very likely due to the same force that, as was motivating many private persons, the fear that someone else might get in first. I like this little bit of conversation here as well. Uh, somebody, he, he says, Then I asked, Didn't somebody or other once say, This is the way the world ends, not with a bang but a whimper? Phyllis looked shocked. Somebody or other, she exclaimed. That was Mr. Elliot. Well, it certainly looks as if he had the idea that time, I said. Here, um, this bit just interested me because I'm learning French and it's... Uh, well, I'll just read it out. The rest of the world appeared to be too busy keeping a mask on its own troubles to bother about us anymore. Though one time we did hear a voice speaking with historical dispassion of Le Croumont de l'Angleterre. The word a Croumont was not very familiar to me, but it had a horribly final sound. And I believe it means the, eclap the, uh, the collapse. I looked it up. 
And uh, yeah, so that's about all I have to say about the Kraken Wakes. I must admit, I was a little disappointed with it. It wasn't as good as the Day of the Triffids, but it was still pretty good. What he did quite well, I suppose, was he painted a creature or a civilization or whatnot. It's never really explained and you never see them. But for me, I wanted that explanation, so I did find that a little bit annoying. But uh, all in all, it was kind of competent. It was all right. It was a three out of five. So there you have it, that's what I thought of The Crack and Wakes by John Wyndham. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.